From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Amy Lavina McQuinn. This Mass is offered in memory of Amy Lavina McQuinn and the souls of the deceased members of her family. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Let us pray on this feast day of St. John Chrysostom. O God, strength of those who hope in you, who willed that the Bishop St. John Chrysostom should be illustrious by his wonderful eloquence and his experience of suffering. Grant us, we pray, that instructed by his teachings, we may be strengthened through the example of his invincible patience. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. And with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then Jesus came forward and touched the pallet, and the bearers stood still. And Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has been among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about Jesus spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. The Gospel of the Lord. All of us who would dare to stand up here and preach to you on uh, this particular day, the Feast of St. John Chrysostom, are well aware how far we are from him. Not only did he uh, live way back in the, the second half of the fourth century, but he was also named Chrysostom, the Golden Mouth. Speaking uh, not only for myself, but also, I think, for the Daily Mass homilists, we are not golden-mouthed preachers. We should probably begin each homily with the words, St. John of the Golden Mouth, pray for me. I wonder what he would have made of uh, today's readings. Our gospel is found only in Luke's gospel. Jesus and his disciples are up north in Galilee, and by chance they come across a funeral procession from a house to the village burial ground. The dead man would have been carried on the equivalent of a, a stretcher, two poles held together a thick cloth. A village funeral would bring all the villagers to walk in procession, especially in this case. You heard it. His mother had now lost her only son after having lost her husband earlier in life. I picture Jesus, his disciples, and the large crowd that had joined him coming towards the funeral or maybe moving aside to let it pass by. Picture both groups. No small gathering when their paths crossed. Having uh, drawn aside and stopped in sympathy for the dead man's mother, Jesus now moved towards her and spoke to her gently. Do not be afraid. Strange words. But he didn't leave them with words. He touched the stretcher. The carriers looked at each other. What is this man doing, breaking into a funeral? This was unheard of. They were, they were dumbfounded. But then 
they heard this man speak. Did he really say what they think they heard? Young man, I say to you, rise up. Looking once again across the body, they couldn't believe their eyes. The dead man was stirring, moving, coming back to life. And only, not only that, he who was dead began to speak. Jesus uh, seemed to be the only one who was not stuck to the ground. He reached out, took the young man by a hand, and gave him back to his mother. I, uh, I put myself at that funeral. I couldn't believe what I'd seen. This man, Jesus from Nazareth, has power to bring people back from death. Death is not the last word. I heard the others talk to one another. Wow, do you see what I see? Only a great prophet could do that. Wow. In the village, I'm sure, they talked about it for days and weeks on end. And more than among the villagers, the real rejoicing must have been between a mother and her only son. So, does a, a story like that encourage us to renew our belief in the second last statement of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Let us pray for those who are grieving the loss of a family member or a close friend. We pray to the Lord. For those who will die this week and for those caring for them, we pray to the Lord. For the many friends and family members who have gone before us into eternal life, we pray to the Lord. And for our own special intentions at this time. We pray to the Lord. We weave into the darkest night the strands of God shining bright. We weave into the victory won the joy and hope of the risen sun. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present in commemoration of St. John Chrysostom 
be pleasing to you, O God, for, taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise through Christ our risen Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Chrysostom, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, you heal her by his words of preaching, and you keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your as our Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Chrysostom, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, our bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. In our, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer those near us a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
With those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of Father Carlo Maria Martini. Lord, help me enter into that peace which consists in having put my life in your hands. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that these mysteries we have received as we commemorate St. John Chrysostom may confirm us in your love and enable us to be faithful in confessing your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277. For details.